بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي لحبة في الله The Prophet Ali after the Salatu Wasalam ordered us to have fiqh fi deen. Or he, and he also illustrated for us or told us the importance of having knowledge of the religion so that we can practice and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala basira. This is the point of knowing these ahkam, knowing how to fast properly so that you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. And part of that fiqh fi deen, the habit of Allah, is knowing the ahkam of Som, knowing how to fast and knowing what breaks your fast, knowing when to break your fast, knowing when to begin your fast, uh, issues about your intention, knowing about uh, the manners and akhlaq that we're supposed to strive to obtain when we're fasting, and knowing that the purpose of fasting, that we can gain taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal, Qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabi al kareem Ya ayu al-ladheen, ya ayu al-ladheen amanu Ya ayu al-ladheen amanu kutub alaykum siyam Kama kutub al-ladheen min qablakum la'alukum tatakun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says O you who believe So he's addressing the believers O you who believe Fasting was prescribed for you Similar to the way it was prescribed for those uh, Who came before you In order that you would gain taqwa In order, in order that you would gain uh, God consciousness that you will be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you would fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and you with fear of him and help us to avoid the muharramat and stay away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with ahabatifillah kama kunna that fiqh fi deen the Prophet والسلام, said, Man bihi khayran, fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and you with understanding of His deen to help us remove ourselves from blindness and from blind following and from darkness and give us the nur of ilm, the nur of uh, the light of knowledge. So study Ahabat uh, Allah. I'm encouraging myself first and foremost and my brothers and sisters to study, get back into those texts. Benefit during this Ramadan. Give yourself an issue even. Of course the Qur'an. First and foremost is the Qur'an. And that's sufficient. But if you perhaps are not a person who's used to just reading the Qur'an a lot and so forth, maybe you, you'll have other time to do other things. So make sure you listen to lectures. Make sure you benefit from those students of knowledge and those uh, students of knowledge and those du'a, those people who are calling to Tawheed, calling to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and telling you how to have fiqh fi deen. Part of this fiqh fi deen, Ahabat is about Som. And one of the issues I wanted to talk about today aside from just general about knowledge and so forth, and we'll be as brief as possible, is the importance of watching the tongue during Ramadan. Outside of Ramadan and in Ramadan. And may Allah forgive us for any of our mistakes and any sins we've occurred, incurred with the tongue because it's so easy to backbite. Backbiting is so easy. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ even informed us how, <coughs> how easy it is and how the people uh, take it lightly. It's something kabir, it's something big, but the people take lightly. The Prophet والسلام, said uh, in the hadith of Abi Huraira or the hadith of Ibn Abbas, عنه, I, I can't recall who the, the, the Rawi was. He said, Marra Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Fakal, innahum li yu'addiban, muma yu'addiban fi kabir. Amma aharuhum fa kana la yistatiru min al-bawl. Wa amma aharuhum fa kana yimshi bin namima. Fa akhada juridatun rutbatun fa shaka nisfain. فغرز في كل كبر واحد قال فقلنا يا رسول الله لما فعلت هذا قال لعله يخفف عنهما ما لم يبسا The Prophet ﷺ said that you'll find in Bukhari and Muslim he was walking by some graves and he, 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 uh, he went by two graves and he said that they're being punished in those graves. So this again affirms for us, Sahabatifillah, that the punishment of the grave exists. He said, And they're being punished for something in which they, the people don't think is uh, it's not a big deal. As for one of them, is they used to not... Uh, carefully clean themselves when they were making a stinja, Allah. When they were washing themselves in the restroom, maybe they got urine on their clothing. Maybe they got urine 
uh, on their, their persons or what have you, and they did fail to wash it off. So they weren't careful when cleaning themselves. Ahabatifillah, be cautious about that. Be mindful about this. I'm advising myself first and foremost and my brothers and sisters. Let's be mindful about when we go to the restroom, clean yourself properly because it's so serious. That's such a serious sin. We don't even think about it. And that's the point. The people don't think it's a big deal, but it's a big deal to Allah Azza that you clean yourself properly, you prepare yourself for the prayer. So this is the first one. The second one, As for the other one, they used to uh, uh, do namima. They used to slander people, and basically to spread uh, evil around the community. The ulama, they explain uh, namima as being uh, someone uh, uh, or the act of speaking uh, about others in order to spread facade, spread evil around the community. So we want to avoid that in Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. Getting to the matter at hand, I wanted to read a couple of hadith and, and, and emphasize this is a hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that was in Sahih Muslim. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال أتدرون ما غيبة ما الغيبة قالوا الله ورسوله أعلم قال ذكرك أخاك بما يكره قال أهلهما أفرأي أفرأيت إن كان في أخي ما أقول قال إن كان فيه ما تقول فقد أكتبته وإن لم يكن فيه فقد بحته this is in Sahih Muslim, Allah, and this shows us about the adab uh, in and outside of Ramadan, but I want to emphasize this for Ramadan especially, to be cautious. In this hadith of the Prophet والسلام, that was reported by Abu Huraira, عنه, he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Do you know what ghibah is? You know, do you know what backbiting is? He said this to his companions, and they said, Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is mentioning your brother with that which he dislikes. Then one of them said, and what if what we say about our brother is true? Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and if it is true, what you said about him, then this is ghiba. This is backbiting. If what you said about him is not true, this is buhta. This is lying. You know, like a slander. This is slandering. Look at that. We learned some very valuable lessons. Be quiet. The shahid is to be quiet. Keep silence, uh, silent about your brothers and sisters in Islam and about others. Keep silent about people. Especially during Ramadan, guard your tongue. And I'm advising myself, as I'm pointing you uh, at you, these one, two, three fingers are coming back to me. So I'm going to do my best, uh, and put, put the, the best foot forward, so to speak, and try to avoid those activities of speaking ill about others. Even, even sometimes when, it, when it's right, when, when it's uh, right, um, when it's uh, lawful to do so. Meaning if you are speaking about in order to har uh, prevent the harm to the community about an innovator or about the mistakes of an individual. I'm going to do my best at Dora Ramadan. I will not busy myself with refutations or anything. Not that I busy myself with that anyhow, but occasionally when the time comes up, when I feel it's a necessity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we try to do that. We try to cook, to do the wajib because it's not that as some of those people who are extremists say... Uh, that you should never make refutations. No, refutation not from the deen. A'udhu billah. That's, that's batil. Why? Because the salaf of this ummah had to refute. They had to refute in order to protect this religion. And the religion still needs protecting because now we have the sh shubahat of the seculars. Now we have the shubahat of the, uh, the people who are uh, extreme uh, liberists. 
uh, liberalist. And now we have the extreme of people who just don't want Dean at all, the Mulahideen. And then we have people, uh, communists, and we have this one, and we have all kind of ideologies, and the, the, uh, the Democrats. And what I mean is the people who worship democracy. They worship democracy. I'm not talking about people who uh, believe democracy is a, a nice system or what have you, or they get their rights and they have the freedom of speech, freedom of expression. No, I'm talking about those people who worship those principles and take those principles above the shara. They take it above the shara ilah and they want that to, to be implemented in the Muslim lands. Abitifillah, we have to defend the religion against that. But getting back to the matter at hand, be cautious about what you speak about and cautious what you use your tongue for during the holy month of Ramadan. Use it for remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for, for remembering the mistakes of others. Remember your mistakes during this holy month and focus on yourself. Ahabbati fillah, make a saghfar kathira. And listen to this hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal laylat usriya bi nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal وَنَذَرَ فِي الْبَابِ وَإِذَا قَامَ يَأْكُلُونَ الْجَيْفِ وَإِذَا قُمْ يَأْكُلُونَ الْجَيْفِ قال من هؤلاء الله يا جبريل قال الذين يأكلون اللحوم الناس Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما he reported that the uh, messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم on the night of uh, Layla to Mi'raj that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم that he, he saw a people, this is when he was with Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, and he, uh, you know, the, the salat was legislated, he ascended to the heavens, he saw the hellfire, he saw the people being punished alayhi salatu wa salam, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this night, he saw, he saw a, a, a door, and there was a people that were eating carcasses at that door. And he said, Who are they, O Jibreel? And Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, responded, He said, Those are the people who used to eat the people. Uh, uh, those are the people who eat the flesh of people. Those are the people who are backbiting and making namima in this dunya. So habitifillah, those are stern warnings for us to avoid that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits, prohibits us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujrat, He says, do not uh, backbite one another. Do you like, would you like to eat the flesh? of uh, one of your brothers or, or one of you and uh, eat the flesh of your brother, uh, the, the, the flesh of your dead brother, for verily you would, you despise it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that this is something that is uh, wicked, it is something that's evil, it is something that's distasteful, that the people hate, and that we should avoid it. Letting us know this is a serious sin, Alhamdulillah. Avoid this. We don't want to be like the, those people who the Prophet Ali saw in, 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 uh, in the hellfire and at, at this door, eating the flesh, eating carcasses. We ate that in this dunya. What about in the hereafter? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and forgive us for any backbiting we've done to anyone. May Allah forgive us. And may Allah bless us with ilm al-nafiraz kin tayyibu amil al-mutakabbilin. May Allah bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. May Allah bless us to, to, to make it to this Ramadan and fast this holy month of Ramadan and to have a successful holy month of Ramadan and implement uh, this beautiful deen in our lives and have it to have an effect upon our lives to... to, to outside of Ramadan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.